Hello everyone, I'm Greg and welcome back to the latest Watchpoint. We're going to look at Thread Sanitizer. If you're wondering, and by the way, why I'm in the shed, I like to do my videos from this shed. This is the shed where my company Undo first started, so it's kind of a special place to me and still my favourite place for doing all my videos. Yeah, so Thread Sanitizer, so all about finding uh, those race conditions. Race conditions, of course, are among the hardest things to debug uh, always and, you know, more and more common as more code goes multi-threaded. Um, so let's just dive straight in. Uh, here is a really uh, simple race condition, uh, which I've actually taken this from the thread sanitizer documentation. Um, so it's stupid and simple as you can imagine, really. Two threads, both writing into this shared uh, global. Um, and uh, depending which thread gets there first, we're going to get a different result. Usually the main thread gets there first, the child thread updates it with 42. So what you end up with is 42, right? Child thread loses the race. And so that's the value that persists. So let's just run it and see what happens. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so if I run this, um, we'll see, like, it usually works, right? But if I go, I happen to know that if I run this in a loop like this, uh, then, oh, done a thousand iterations that time before it failed. Now, usually it's a few hundred, right? So one in a few hundred times this program fails. Classic race condition, horrible to debug, at least if it was, you know, not such a trivial piece of code. Um, now, Thread sanitizer, can, these things can be kind of daunting because they sound magical and complicated, but actually really easy, and they kind of are, but really easy uh, to use, although with one caveat that we'll see right now. Um, so it's a it's a compiler feature. So whether I'm using GCC or Clang, um, it's basically the same. F sanitize uh, equals thread. Um, I'll give it dash G so that um, it can get, like, get the line numbers and things. By the way, common misunderstanding, you, probably, you might have heard me say this before, but dash G does not change the generated code at all. It just causes the compiler to output some debug information, which then is... Now, F sanitize does change the generated code, like a lot. Um, that's kind of the point. But dash G helps sanitize be better. Uh, Ray, and then, and now when I run it... Uh, ah, now, this is what I was getting at. So, almost very trivial to use, except for in modern systems. It's, what is this? This is uh, reasonably modern... Uh, Ubuntu, and they're configured in a way that, that Sanitizer doesn't like. We'll probably get back into like why. Um, all you need to know to start with is if we just set the randomness bits on uh, the address space randomization to something like 30, uh, now it will work. Um, great. So I've run my program with Sanitizer. Um, if you, by the way, if you just if you see this problem, just Google that error message. You'll very quickly um, remember how to uh, configure it. Now, I run, when I run that, um, yeah, it's uh, there's a data race, right? And um, which indeed there is, and it's got these two writes. It's detected, and it's able to tell me that there's a write here at line 17, and another one here at line nine, which was in the program we just looked at. And uh, yeah, they're but they're they're dodgy, right? Um, and what it's what it's able to say, what it's able to work out is that these, the the two threads are accessing the same piece of memory without having a common set of locks held, right? And at least one of those accesses is a write, um, and so that's probably a data race. Actually, the the real algorithm is a little bit more complicated than that. It does some stuff to avoid false positives and things, but if you think of it like that, that's good enough, right? That's basically what it's doing. Um, and yeah, great tells you the line of code where that happened. You know, it's. Uh, uh, you can actually configure it to, to break there if you want, and um, and uh, then you can attach your debugger. Um, but often you just got that's the line of code, right? That's the that's the smoking gun. So great, just that's all you need to know really to get the most of it. But we can get into more details right now. By the way, if you like this content, please do like and subscribe. Helps me to know what people are liking, and it will help you to get the content uh, straight into your inbox. So yes, what else can we do? Um, because uh, there's a bit more to it than that, and there's different kind of races as well. Um, you can control this in a couple of ways. The easiest way is just with some uh, environment variables, right? So that's probably um, what I've just shown you is probably enough. But if you want to get into a bit more uh, fine grained stuff, uh, you, we've got these options that you can set. You just do it by setting an uh, environment variable like this, okay? And then you then you set your options like this. Um, so there are a bunch. I'm not going to go through them all. There are many more than this. These are just some examples. Um, and you can you can look at the documentation to see that. I'm going to talk about um, a couple of them, though. One in particular that I think is interesting in a minute. Um, I can also change the code. I can also kind of make my code sanitizer aware. OK, so if I write this little bit of code here uh, like that, then this bit only builds if we're under threat sanitizer. And of course, I can do the inverse as well. So that's kind of useful. And I can also turn it off and on in certain places with these attributes. So if I've got some you know, piece of performance critical code that I know my race isn't in there, I don't want to, you know, I can I can turn off the sanitizer <coughs> or I can disable the instrumentation entirely, actually, um, or maybe 
says I'm getting from false positives, I might turn it off here. So you can, you know, yeah, you can do more and more. Obviously, be, be careful with it because you end up sanitizing a different program than the one that's you're running in production. So you don't want it to be too different, but it can be very useful. Um, uh, yeah, let's um, let's look at something else now because just I I find um, a couple of really common mistakes with rose conditions that. Uh, uh, and threat sanitizer can help with both. So this is kind of this just, just a classic one. I didn't take the locks, um, um, but but there's yeah there's other kinds of races. That's a classic data race. Um, threat sanitizer really is mostly about data races, but but there are lots of uh, there's some other things it can do as well, as I say. So one one thing um, that I was impressed about is um, impressed by if I take my little program here. Let's let's add uh, let's add uh, a little sleep like that. If I do that, this is probably going to mean that the worker thread always loses the race, and so the value always ends up at forty-two, right? So uh, let's uh, let's do that. We'll just do it. We'll just run it normally, and if I uh, run that like I did before, yeah, it's going to just keep on running, right? So, but that's not really a fix to my race. I still have a race there, and in fact. If I ran this long enough, eventually it would fail. I've just made it less likely to, to, to bite. And people do this a lot. And they think that, oh, well, I'm waiting for a second, maybe. Um, I'm waiting for a, a, a millisecond here, but I can maybe wait for a second, and that's always going to be long enough. And program runs a bit slow. Who cares? I, I see this a lot with, for example, you kick off another program, wait for it to write some answer to a file, wait a second, and then read the answer from the file. Like, Eventually, if you run enough times, if you run at scale, that is going to go wrong. You never ever synchronize by sleep. Any kind of sleep in code is a is a is a is a code smell to me. Um, and I was I liked that uh, sanitizer will um, will, uh, will will detect that for us. So if I run that, um, yeah, as if synchronized by sleep. Um, so <clears throat> I quite like that. I thought that was a nice little clue as to as to what's going wrong. Um, one thing about sanitizer, I mean, it's not perfect. Okay, so there can be false positives and there can be false negatives as well. So if I, let's take that sleep back out again. And um, let's uh, compile that again. If I run this, um, usually it's detecting it, but if I run it enough times, it will, there we go, look, this, this, it, it, it didn't. Um, so uh, I, I'll have a little look at the code here. I think what's going on, is uh, sometimes uh, this thread create p thread create comes back here and the and the, the child thread's not running yet or at least like sanitizer hasn't registered it as running yet um, and then uh, this uh, this write happens and then sanitizer sort of detects the thread's been created um, and so it sometimes misses it um, so it's not static analysis okay it's that you have to sanitizers rely on catching the bug in um, in the act okay. Um, but as you can see, it doesn't have to like go wrong. It, 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 the, the false negatives are much less common, but it's just, you know, what I'm saying is if you get a kind of a clean bill of health from, from, sanit from thread sanitizer, it does not mean you have no races in your code, okay? Um, and equally, if it gives you a warning, it doesn't mean you do have a, you don't necessarily have a race, um, although it probably is undefined behavior. So um, it's probably, yeah, it's all, always uh, worth uh, getting its sanitizer clean. Um, yeah, the other thing I wanted to talk about, just a just a quick thing, in because of the different kinds of races, is the um, uh, in, if we go back to our sanitize options, uh, I quite like this one: re uh, report signal and safe. And that's so. One problem I see a lot, as I say, is they're synchronizing via sleep. The other problem I see a lot is um, uh, people like signal handlers, and they write code in their signal handler, and they include functions that are not async signal safe. And if you want to know about that, you can just go man uh, signal uh, safety. Um, and it'll tell you all about uh, which functions you're allowed to call from async for signal handlers. The reason for this, by the way, is that uh, Libc likes to take locks. And so if you do say printf from your signal handler, that's not async signal safe because printf will take a lock, take a mutex inside Libc. And then if your like, you know, your sigint or your sig alarm or whatever comes in while that lock is held, and then your signal handler runs, and then you call printf from that signal handler, it will block on that lock and deadlock. Uh, so bad idea. It was a classic, you know, race condition. You get away with it 99.9999% of the time, but every so often, you know, you get these hangs in your program, and it's really hard to know like what's going on, and to, and to really hard to debug those. Um, so yeah, sanitizer will just tell you if you set that option. Um, it'll just say you you're in a signal handler and you did something that was 
that was not safe. Um, so you can do a bunch of stuff like that, which is uh, which is very useful. So it's not just for data races. Okay, that's that's not a data race um, that I just that, that async signal handler, um, but it is but it is a race. Okay, it only matters if you happen to get that signal at an unfortunate time. Uh, cool. Yeah. So like I say, if you like this, do remember to like and subscribe. Um, that helps you uh, you know get the get the latest content when uh, when I produce it and it helps me as well to know like what's working and what, what do people like um, but uh, with that we'll wrap and happy debugging of your race conditions <laughs>